Back in June of 2006, Universal Studios Hollywood introduced the Fast and the Furious Extreme Close-Up, an attraction stop on the lot's famous Studio Tram Tour. This would be an extremely simplified and brief example of special effects and early motion control technology to promote Tokyo Drift. In this attraction, there were two large Kuko robotic arms that threw car shells towards guests along with some fire, mist, and some other stuff. In 2013, the stop was closed as a new attraction for the now successful franchise was in development. As rumors circulated, park fans speculated how Universal would represent the franchise, a really, really good franchise, in a thrilling way. And in 2014, Universal began teasing this new attraction, Fast and Furious Supercharge, a thrilling street chase in the middle of a high-octane world of the franchise would open in June of 2015. Here on Amusement Labs, we like to cover riots that tell an inspiring and thrilling story using groundbreaking technology and engineering to transport and immerse guests into another world. This is not one of those rides. Instead, what Universal opted to create was one of the most... How do I put this gently? The most uninspired and absurd ride I've ever seen. For those of you who've seen King Kong 360 3D or Skull Island Ring of Kong, just watch and enjoy it. I think you might recognize a few things. With the construction of the ride beginning in about early to mid-2014, the large show building rose from the ground where the old Curse of the Mummy's tomb scene used to be. When the ride was done, Universal would open with something entertaining and exciting that would definitely throw guests and also supercharged. A star-studded event would lead up to the attraction's opening and a quick introduction into the tour as the finale. As the tram approaches the old dilapidated building, its doors slide open and we enter the building as The Rock talks about some witness mumbo jumbo who cares. Uh, we then are paused around a street racing workshop that looks like something out of a Harbor Freight circular before heading into the actual pre-show. In the pre-show, we come across another wing of the warehouse in the midst of a party that can only be described as a weird conga line. I don't know what's going on there. That's actually because in the rafters above the ride is a large screen that is reflected off of a thin film stretch across between the walls. Whatever's on the screen, whether it be like people dancing or cars or an ad for the f McRib who gives a shit, whatever it is will show up appearing in this general area. After this, the FBI shows up, something about the rock's gun being bigger, some weird insults that probably won't age well, blah 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 blah, let's just skip past that. Oh, and uh, then we have Baby Groot and Letty come up from a screen standing on a truck that's actually there, and then we're ushered into the next scene where the actual ride is. By the way, remember this time in the bottom corner, that's important for later. We then make inside the actually impressive part of the ride the long wraparound projection screen. It like spans the entire length of the tram, which is four cars long, mind you, and then all the way back around and in front and in the back, I believe, too. The ride utilizes the same retracting stabilizers on the tram cars to secure them to four hydraulic and pneumatic three degree of freedom motion bases. This just will basically tilt the trams left, right, forward and back and up down a little bit. On the side of the platforms are water misters, a couple of heaters for the fire effect at the beginning, and a couple of CO2 outlets positioned strategically to cause the most hearing loss. Originally rendered on an overclocked PS2 with a broken fan and then projected using your third grade teacher's overhead projector, we are somehow pulled into the Jurassic lot of the park parking structure. I'm not entirely sure how that happens. And then we escape at a high speed in a tram, you know, as, as trams do into a pursuit through LA. Letty then straight up murders the villain like a fly in a freaking windshield after hooking us up to her rig. And then in some really Looney Tunes physics bullshit, Baby Groot literally jumps out of a moving vehicle, becomes a giant, and grabs a freaking drone or a helicopter, who, who cares? And then somehow, after finding that lands back in his car, Mind you, having somehow continued to keep up with us without a driver and pops back in like nothing ever happened. Sure, why not? We then are hit with a lawsuit waiting to happen on an open road that leads to a bridge under construction. We soar through the air and in some miraculous feat, Don pulls out from a landing 
that should have killed him instantly and after having their ears blown out were somehow between shipping containers. I don't get it either. It doesn't make any sense to me. The ride total is about 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Which is actually shorter than the Bray show that we saw earlier. The front of the screen then retracts out and pulls up and the tram gets to the best part of the ride, the exit. And so, that was Fast and the Furious Supercharged. The ride is, shall we say, a, a masterpiece of a type. I'm not sure which one. When it opened, it was met with reviews, but luckily Universal learned from this and improved the ride dramatically as it made its way over to Orlando. Oh, ho hold on, I have a... I'm getting warned that they... They did not do that. With live actors. And it's, and it's shorter. And it's in San Francisco, but somehow... Okay, that doesn't make any sense, but clearly they must have improved the graphic. They didn't. Alright then. F***. <clears throat> well, soon after in 2015, Universal announced that the ride would be coming as a standalone ride to Universal Studios Florida as some kind of sick punishment. It would be replacing a Beetlejuice state show and another standalone remake from the tram tour, Disaster, in the San Francisco section of the park. It replaced Disaster. Hmm, how fitting. The derelict Q building contains a weird showroom, workshop, movie, merchandise, synergy design, and two pre-shows with live actors awkwardly interacting with some pre-recorded videos of the franchise stars. It's just weird. But don't worry, I'm not gonna make you sit through them. I, I didn't want to sit through them myself, so we're gonna move on. In Orlando, the ride would introduce a new set of oceaneering trackless and driverless ride buses done up like party buses, you know, something discreet. They would navigate the ride instead of trams that they have in Hollywood. Despite having a larger audience, the Orlando version would be around half the size of the Hollywood version using only two cars in each section, versus the four in Hollywood due to the size and space limitations that they have. Two of these party buses are loaded at a time and then enter into a new added effect that honestly is the best part of the Florida version, with an endless tunnel effect to play riders an abbreviated version of the original rock video, minus the FBI guy. The effect's actually quite simple, it's just done by projecting some fake lights and a wall texture onto floor-to-ceiling screens while the vehicles are rumbled a bit on the floor and breezed by some fans. The passing lights make it seem like the tunnel never ends and it's mostly just the whole riders until the vehicles ahead can advance. From here, the vehicles exit the fake tunnel and make a U-turn, something the riders should have done at the right entrance, and then enter that same weird conga line party thing. The same spiel and the same jokes that definitely won't age well, and then the ride. We again are put into a parking structure and... Wait, is that the same Jurassic lot? Yeah, I'm being told it's the same one. Okay folks, I guess in their infinite wisdom they couldn't even be bothered to re-render the entire show. And so for a ride that's based in San Francisco, in Florida, they somehow put us back in Los Angeles. Beautiful! We then escape. You, you know what? Alright, I'm done. I'm done. <sighs> the rides are large capacity vehicles, trackless Wi Fi guided vehicles with all steering tires in Orlando and trams in Hollywood that parks between two giant screens that show a PS2 cut screen and sprays water to. That's it. And yet, somehow, this thing in Orlando has a virtual line for when it gets busy and is popular. That's all I have to say. That's it. That's all it is. <sighs> and yet somehow this thing replaced two attractions. Oh, and by the way, you might want to look at the day that this was posted. I'm just joking, guys. Come on. This isn't a real How It Works video. There's a lot more of these coming. But if you enjoyed this little joke slash rant, please subscribe. We have a Patreon with early access and more. We also have a Discord, too, I should mention. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the parks. Family. <laughs>